Hear the words of the Colic for the second Sunday after Trinity. O Lord, who never failest to help and govern those whom thou didst bring up in thy steadfast fear and love, keep us, we beseech thee, under the protection of thy good providence, and make us to have a perpetual fear and love of thy holy name. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be always acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. We pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Diane and I were talking earlier this week about a reading that we had in morning prayer on Tuesday concerning Balaam and his ass. Oh, excuse me, I mean donkey. No, it was an ass. Uh, the whole story of Balaam, his ass, and Balak, king of the Moabites, is found in the book of Numbers, and it goes from chapters 22 through 24. However, the discussion actually centered upon, not the reading itself, but that which was skipped. Because if you've actually done morning and evening prayer through the year, you find that it skips verses from time to time. Sometimes it goes back to them, and sometimes it doesn't. But, so it's centered around the verses that were skipped, which was Numbers 22, verses 22 to 35. And this had to do with Balaam and his ass, and how the animal saved him three times from being killed by an angel who had been sent from God to do exactly that, kill it. So, we begin the passage with Numbers chapter 22, verses 20 to 22. And God came unto Balaam at night and said unto him, If the men come to call thee, rise up and go with them. But yet the word which I shall say unto thee, that shalt thou do. And Balaam rose up in the morning and saddled his ass, and went with the princes of Moab, and God's anger was kindled because he went. And the angel of the Lord stood in the way for an adversary against him. Now he was riding upon his ass, and his two servants were with him. Now the central question that we were discussing was, why did God do this when he had just told Balaam to go and do it? Now we believe in a God that is righteous and just, but why does it seem to say here that God is telling Balaam to do something so that he can get mad at him and go send an angel to kill him? Doesn't seem to make any sense. Well, here's the problem. You see, we forget to remember what God had already told Balaam. Previously, when the first group of Moabite princes came to him. And we read this in previous verses, which is Numbers 22, 12, and 13. And God said unto Balaam, Thou shalt not go with them, thou shalt not curse the people, for they are blessed. And Balaam rose up in the morning and said unto the princes of Balak, Get you into your land, for the Lord refuses to give me leave to go with you. He had previously told him, Don't do this. But he does it anyway. So three times the ass saves Balaam from being killed by this angel of destruction. And all this animal gets is beatings three times. Call PETA. Oh my God. Call the ASPCA. Animal cruelty. Oh my goodness. What are we going to do? But then God says, I'm going to let the ass speak for himself. So we read in Numbers 22, 28. And the Lord opened the mouth of the ass, and she said unto Balaam, What have I done unto thee that thou hast smitten me these three times? Then God opens Balaam's eyes so that he can see what stands in his way. And we read his reply in Numbers 22, 34. And Balaam said unto the angel of the Lord, I have sinned, for I knew not that thou stoodest in the way against me. Now therefore, if it displease thee, I will go back again. Now we could say that because... Balaam was just trying to follow the word of God, that he was going there, that, and he didn't see the angel, and know he was in danger, that he was okay. Except, the key point in the whole discussion was, that God had already told him, thou shalt not go with them. Now, if God had spoken to us in like manner, 
and we keep going back to him asking for a different answer, God is going to tell us the same thing that he told Balaam. He's going to say, go ahead and do it, even if that's not what I said to do. We have free will, you know. But just because God does not intervene, does not mean that it's going to change the truth that while he loves us, he will still judge us for our rebellion against him and his commandments. We will find out, just as Balaam did, that the anger of the Lord was actually kindled against us and may very well lead to our eternal death, not just the physical one. Now, with this long preamble, we can understand what the colic for today is praying for. It prays for God to help and govern us. Now, God seeks to do this through the Ten Commandments and the teachings of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. These are the words that we should live by. These are the teachings that we should obey. It is through these words that God does help us avoid sin and the consequences of that very sin. If we think that we can ignore God's teaching and commit sin time after time after time, we are sadly mistaken. For example, Jesus was not teaching that we could ignore the commandment on adultery when he did not condemn the woman taken in that very act. But he said to her in John 8, 11, and Jesus said to her, neither do I condemn thee, go and sin no more. In the epistle for today, we read a very like thought when we hear St. John say in 1 John 3, 24, and he that keepeth his commandments dwelleth in him and he in him, and hereby we know that he abideth in us by the spirit which he hath given us. If we do not keep the Lord's commandments in the spirit of and through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and just keep making excuses for ignoring those teachings, we prove that we neither love God nor fear him. <clears throat> then we may well hear spoken to us that which we hear as the conclusion of the gospel lesson for today, which is Luke 14, 24. For I say unto you that none of those men which were bidden shall taste of my supper. Now we know that we are all invited to a great supper. Not in this world, in the next. The question is, will those words be spoken to us? Because we do not love and fear God? We cannot know the teachings of God and then seek a different interpretation of those very teachings which fits in better with our desires. If we do, then we are no better than Balaam seeking the rewards of this world by going against what God has already told us. And we may not have a friendly ass to keep us out of the way of God's judgment. If we do not obey what God has already told us, then we will no longer be under his goodwill and protection. It won't happen. It can't happen. In that case, we will certainly run into the consequences of our actions sooner or later. And our physical death may be the least of our problems. It is in our choices to listen to God and do things his way, which proves that we both love him and fear him. I do not see how we can have no fear of God when this being of perfection has every right to sentence us imperfect people to hell. I don't know how I cannot fear him. I love him, yes. Does he love me? Yes, he does. But if there is no fear, then we can presume on his love and go ahead and, oh, well, God loves me. I can do whatever I want. And God's going to say, go ahead. I just hope you have a friendly ass around to save it. We cannot think that we have the form of godliness 
without the intent of godliness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen.